So welcome back everyone. We're making slow but steady progress on our Simona bag. I have uh, everything cut out and interfaced and fused. Um, it took me it took me a good five hours so uh, but this is a very important part so much as some of us dread it um, just do it enjoy put on some music and uh, just embrace it because you can't fight it and like I said it's really critical to your bag success um, so what I want to do is I want to show you go over the pattern pieces give you some measurements that are not included um, in the pattern not divulging anything um, maybe give you a few tips too so you might want to take notes or just come back to the video as you need to but I'm going to be giving you some uh, tips so no particular order of the pieces so this is the uh, side pocket lining Sometimes it's hard to tell in a pattern piece what's the top and the bottom when you take it apart. So I like to put a, a little marking, a little T there for top. Just helps you when I put it together that I'm going the right direction because nobody wants to rip and skip. We are doing a, um, a zipper placket on the bag, a recess zipper, if you will. Um, so the measurement for this is, and it's not part of the pattern, we're just doing this ourselves. This is going to be eight inch wide by one and a half inch high. You're going to want to cut four of these out of your vinyl. And then on two of them, you're going to want to fuse some Decaville light. And the way it should be is, I'll try to show you, you want to have a, a gap up here because we're going to put that into the, we don't want the zipper attached to that. So zipper, I'm, I'm sorry, we do want the zipper attached to this part and we don't want it to have to be attached to the um, Decafil light. So just uh, leave a gap up there. You're gonna do it on two of these pieces and then the other two are just plain. So this is, all of it is uh, vinyl. That will make for a very nice uh, recessed zipper. We add the woven views because we don't want our uh, zipper to become weak or wimpy. Nobody wants a wimpy zipper. All right. Now we have the uh, slip pocket. The slip pocket, this is, I do a little bit differently. So what we have is, and I'll give you the measurements of the slip pocket. It will be on the cutting sheet that I will provide to you later on. But uh, for now, I'll tell you. So the slip pocket is, um, interior slip pocket, is going to be a nine inch wide by 13 inch high. And then after you attach your woven fuse, you're gonna cut it so that it's six and a quarter and six and three quarters, so two pieces. So I'll show you that. So we have two pieces, and one is basically just a quarter inch or so difference. And the reason why is we're going to be attaching this little three quarter inch band when we get to it, to the top of the sorter piece. And then when we sew it with this quarter inch, same allowance, and then we bring it back up, it's going to be so pretty. Um, it'll be the same size as the back of the, the backing of the slip pocket. Now the slip pocket, the backing piece, we have fused a piece of Decaville light. That is so that our slip pocket will be nice and firm and not want to be drooping over, which is nice, especially when you put something heavy like a phone in there or... Uh, you know, anything that will cause it to uh, lean forward. So that's our slip pocket. And I will give you all the measurements in the cut list, but for now you have the beginnings of that. Put this here. Then we have the, uh, the zipper pocket. Zipper pocket, nothing fancy on that. I do, I'll give you the measurements for the zipper pocket because I do it differently. Uh, this is 10 inch wide by 16 inch high. After you fuse the interfacing, you're gonna cut this to seven and a quarter and seven three quarters. And kind of the same reason with the slip pocket in that we're going to add the zipper, attach it first to the taller piece, like so, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we add the other piece down below, and by doing so, it should match up on the bottom. I'll show you all that, nothing special except for the cutting. And if you didn't want to mess around with having the little small difference, you could cut them both the same size and then just lop off the edge when the time came. So I'll put these back together. So you have to do the zipper next time. And this is your zipper facing. This is two inch 
by 10 inches. You always want to go the same width as your pocket. And keep in mind, at least for me, um, whatever you make the width of your zipper pocket, it's going to be a two inch less opening for the actual inside the bag. So this is going to be an eight inch zipper, if you will, uh, once we get it all installed. So always keep that in mind. Put this over here. Up next, we have the, uh, this is the lining facing. This will be, a, it's actually, yeah, this is vinyl, and it's going to be on the inside of the bag. I usually like to make the lining facing to be the same material. Um, yeah, that's on the side of the bag. It's up to you. But in this case, my bag side is black vinyl, so I'm going to make this be black vinyl too, so it all kind of matches together. Um, you want to cut these not on the fold, because... Um, when you cut things on the fold on the vinyl, you'll find that they shift. So it's a good habit just to get a, uh, you know, a full piece. I usually will try to measure the, um, the height of the piece here, going this direction, the height. And uh, so in this case, it is, I think, three and three eighths. I'm not giving away any secrets again. So if you cut a rectangle that is three and three eighths by the pattern piece, then you have a straight edge to begin with, and then you can you have a straight edge on both sides, and then you can simply trace the curve and then cut it with scissors or rotary. But um, it, everything, you know, a lot of pattern pieces begin with being rectangles or squares, and then you simply make adjustments to the curves. So that's how I do it. And then you want to, and this is not part of the pattern, this is just me, you want to add a piece of deck of the light on the back of both of these. And the reason why is because you probably have noticed over time, I did learn the hard way, is that after a while, because these, these are holding up the bag, it's, the bag starts kind of collapsing and getting wimpy on top, especially when there's a recessed zipper bringing weight to this portion here. So um, anytime I see a bag that has uh, this type of a facing, I will automatically add the deck of the light, and it really makes a difference. Your bag is not going to be wimpy on top. I do make my own pattern piece for the Decaville light, which is just, I do 85% of the pattern piece. I do cut this on the fold because that's not hard. Um, I trimmed a little bit more off the pattern piece so that it would stay out of the seam allowance on this one. So that's that. And then we have, let's see, this is our lining for the bag, nothing special. Uh, I wanted to fuse Decaville, not Decaville, Woven, woven Fuse 2, but I guess I got sidetracked and I just fused the regular Woven Fuse. It's just fine, but I wanted to show you Woven Fuse 2, I guess another time. That's that. This is, these are the, um, the bands for the bottom of the bag, before whatever will attach our base to, and uh, these, you're going to fuse, don't forget to fuse a piece of foam. And the, the foam, I cut it to, let me see, the band. I did my foam 16 by two inches high. Um, and that way, and then you're gonna fuse, woven fuse on top of it. So using a steam press, by the way, it makes this, all the stuff, this process go much, much faster. So if you have one, um, use it, and if you don't, Consider getting one. It's really a, yeah, it's an invaluable tool. Saves tons of time and it makes fusing things like foam and everything at one time much quicker. Advance. This is the, the base. At the end of this video, I'm going to include a how to make this piece so you can see exactly how I did it. Um, but you can tell it's uh, pretty firm. We haven't added our feet yet. We'll do that when we start putting things together. Um, but this is five layers. So it's the vinyl, it's Decaville light, Decaville regular foam, and woven fuse. So this is my uh, recipe for bottoms. And again, at the end of this video, I will show you how I made this piece too. And uh, like before, I make a template for the inner facing so that I'm not cutting the big size and then trimming it down and having to waste materials, especially something like bozel or anything that is expensive. Actually, everything's expensive, so we don't want to waste if we don't have to. I'll put this back. What do we have here? 
this is the uh, the sides side piece of the bag that's going to be going so that that's black it's going to be on the with the pocket on top of it the copper pocket it's going to be really pretty uh, nothing special about this i do mark again the t for tops because sometimes when you're busy sewing you might accidentally try to attach something here and you're like you'd be unhappy with that so whatever you can do to um prevent mistakes by making some simple markings. So this is this image, and then again, I made a template for the bozel out of paper so that I didn't have to waste my product. This is the uh, exterior pocket piece that's gonna go um, on the exterior. This piece does not require any interfacing. Yay for this piece. If you're, if you're using fabric, obviously you might want to beef it up, but this is vinyl and for what its purpose, it doesn't need any additional interfacing. Here we have our, the main piece for the front and the back. I'm not going to be pretty. It's gonna, I love this vinyl. Um, so we again, we type, we type, we fused first a piece of, not first, on the same order because if you did them in separate orders, you'd have glue all over your steam press. So we put the foam down, put the woven fuse, and we steam it all at one time with this face down. And then we have two beautiful pieces for our front and back. I showed you yesterday how we have our little fancy template that makes that job easier. And of course we have our bozel template for the foam. You can tell these are well used because I like this pattern a lot. Almost done with this part. And then we'll talk about markings. Um, you're gonna, it's up to you, but I like to put scraps of vinyl behind rivets and things. Um, I also like to use longer rivets than sometimes um, I ha are, are required. So this takes care of picking up some of that bulk. Um, so I just have some scraps. I may not use all of that, but before I toss it in the garbage, I will keep it handy. And then we have, are going to be our connector straps. I like to, um, for the hidden connector, so this is not part of the pattern, I like these are about 11 inches and by 2 inches. We're going to be adding a cordura down the center and then uh, making 1 inch straps. Cut them down to about 5 inches, more than what you need, but that way you have room to, you're not struggling with a small piece to work with, and then we trim them later on. So you need a total of 4 5 inch pieces. I cut them longer because I like to be able to start and stop and maybe there's a bad spot. I can cut that off. Not that anyone's going to see it because it's going to be behind the bag, but we know, right? And then last but not least is our straps. I cut the straps 31 inches because once we add the cordura and uh, do the sewing, I'm going to cut off an inch on each side because I like to have a clean start and finish side. And then we have room for um, to put it into the hardware and fold. So I think she called for 29. So I just basically added another extra inch so I could uh, make them have a clean finish. And also you want to be able to check um, your desired uh, strap length. Maybe you don't want it to be 29 or whatever you want. So, all right. So the last thing on this part is better to do it now. I think throughout the pattern she will tell you mark your centers at this time or mark them at this time. I like to just at this point in time, I won't do it on the on the video, but go ahead and mark your centers now. So turn over your pattern piece, put it on the measuring on the cutting board, this board. <laughs> mark your markings for the top and bottoms and do that for all the pieces that it makes sense for where you're going to be doing any kind of physical matching of seams. So the exterior main. I think the side piece you will because you want to mark your uh, snap placement and you also want to mark the top and bottom, especially the top because you're going to be uh, putting that in the top of the bag, obviously. So mark the top and bottom. On your bottom piece, you want to mark all the top and bottom sides, all four sides, and, um, and we're also going to be marking our feet placement, but I'll show you that later on. That's fun. I like my bottom. It's so nice, huh? 
Now you're all going to pick on me because I said I like my bottom. I can handle it. Okay. Uh, let's see. You're going to want to mark the uh, centers on your bases. So these two will be sewn together, and then you're going to want to mark the centers on this one. Your lining, same case, mark the centers, top and bottom. Put that aside. Uh, let's see. Nothing to mark on your zipper pocket except that we will, but I'll show you later on. We are going to be flipping this over and drawing our lines for the zipper. Zipper. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you that. And the slip pocket, nothing to mark on that, really. The uh, contrast band, mm -hmm. nope, nothing to mark on that. Your recessed zipper, not that I'm aware of. So I think that's it. You get the idea. So go ahead, do all your, get everything now, cut out, fused, put on some music, enjoy the process, mark your markings, and then... Um, when you come back for the next video, we're finally going to start sewing. Um, so we're going to, well, I like to put together all the small pieces first and then assemble the bag. So a little different, like we said, than the pattern um, instructs you, but we will end up with a, uh, the same bag in the end. So I think that's it. Let me check my notes. Yep, that's it. So next time we uh, get together, we'll all be ready to uh, start putting the bag together. So. And then the very next video, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you how I do the, uh, the base with my steam press. So that's it for now. Bye. Okay, so let's, um, let's make the base for our bag as far as the inner facing is concerned. This is the vinyl. You want to put it face down. And uh, the next piece we're going to put is... Some Decaville plate. Center it perfectly like so. And uh, we'll just give it a quick little press just to, the, to hold the Decaville light in place. We follow the manufacturer's instructions. They say to uh, put a little water on there, cover it with a cloth, and then let it press. There's that. Then we're going to put the Decaville Heavy on top of this piece. And it's already a little bit warm, so it might just stick in place nicely. And we're trying to center it so that all the seam allowances around the edges are even, which is about 3 eighths of an inch. So there's that. Give it a quick little press just to hold it in place. Make sure it's nice and even. Same case, give it a spritz of water. Put the pressing cloth over it. Count to about eight to 10 seconds. And we have that. And the next up is our double-sided foam. That's going to go here. And because it's double sided, we don't want to have glue on our pressing surface. So we're going to go ahead and just put a larger piece of woven fuse on top of it. Double check that you have the foam even. And give it a good press. trying to do is get the, the edges of the vinyl to be sealed. I'll give it a little bit of a spritz here. And then you're just going to pick it off carefully. And we're going to let this cool completely. After it cools, you're going to trim off all of the excess woven fuse and uh, you have a beautiful, sturdy base for your Simona. I'm going to give it one more press for good measure. Okay. 
This is the uh, steam fast steam iron. I never use the steam feature, but I like the very wide surface. So, so that's it. You, know, you can make a base um, that's going to be very durable. We'll add the feet later on. So thank you.